When it's done right, stealth is a gratifying test of patience, focus and skill. Unless you're Mike, in which case it's a thing standing between you and explosions. <laughs> when stealth is done wrong, on the other hand, it's more irritating than a mosquito in your room at 3am asking to borrow a tenner. We're here today to vent about some of these stealth sections that boiled our blood in some of our favourite games. Join us, why don't you go do beware of spoilers for these following games. I just might have found a ghost writer. I become the reciter, all nighter, all writer. <laughs> Mad Dog's rhyme book from his home in the hills. Mad Dog's rhyme book? Man, you said you helped, Carl. For reasons that are now unclear to me, it was very important in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas that you help the career of aspiring rapper OG Loke. Hey yo, when I come through up in the place, you don't want me to come with a gun in your face. I spit a hotter than anybody in the yo, world could do. That it's shit like I sucks. Damn. I mean, with skills like that, he doesn't need my help. So, because rhyming things is hard, much harder than it looks, you head to rapper Mad Dogs to steal all his rhyme books. If you've played a GTA game before, you're probably already anticipating how this mission is going to go. Ramp a stolen police car through Mad Dog's window, fire off some RPGs, then I guess just see where the mood takes you. Well, good luck, because what the mission actually requires is stealth. In a Grand Theft Auto game? I know! Mad Dog is clearly somewhat paranoid as his house is full of guards patrolling such tactically important locations as his swimming pool and bar. They're highly trained though, look how this one is able to hold his Uzi and play a video game at the same time. Anyway, through perseverance, hard work and the power of self-belief, CJ is able to overcome the fact that GTA San Andreas is in no way built to handle stealth mechanics, and heroically stab an entire private security force to death so that a mediocre rapper can learn that place rhymes with face. I'm the man in the place, punch you in the face, a gun in my way, it's slow, baby! Good to see all those deaths weren't in vain. Man, Aliens Colonial Marines really gave sci-fi's most terrifying monster a disappointing downgrade. It was bad enough that for the majority of the game you mow down the aliens from aliens as if they're paper mache, like alien-shaped piñatas full of green goo. But then stealth mission The Raven was the final nail in the coffin, turning H.R. Geiger's once fearsome creation into crusty hobbling space pensioners. I can't tell if it's looking for me or it's bus pass. These boilers, as they're known, will shamble towards you if they hear you, forcing you to stand still until they lose interest. There's no other option because in this section, like in all good enforced stealth sections, you've accidentally mislaid all of your weapons, even your sidearm. I definitely paid 60 bucks to spend this first person shooter standing still, not shooting anything. At least you get to finally find out what happened to Hudson. The hell? That's a Marine. Yes, he died in the suckiest level of an already extremely sucky game. You know, if you wanted a good alien themed stealth experience, you could have just bought Alien Isolation and maybe we'd have a sequel. Just saying. Episodic adventure Life is Strange has more twists and turns than a tangled slinky, but we thought at least you'll never betray us, mysterious deer with whom Max shares an unspoken mystical bond whose nature is never fully explained. Why am I here again? We did think that until that one time in a trippy hallucination of Max's high school when said dear Patronus led a smack bang into a mandatory stealth section. Oh, dear Patronus, we trusted you. I could be Maybe I'll be safe in the lighthouse. Maybe I'll wake up. So begins a seriously stressful sequence of forced stealth in which you are stalked around a nightmare landscape by your Blackwell Academy teacher, Creeper, and occasional kidnapper, Mr. Jefferson. Please understand, Max. The only 
place I can be my selfie is in the dark room. Using the word my selfie somehow not even in the top five creepiest things about him. You no. used to be so pure, so innocent. Let me capture you. I can teach you so much. Yeah. Yes, we do have the power to rewind time, but you'll forgive us for freaking out nonetheless while trying to pick a path through this spooky hell maze being menaced by nightmare versions of our least favourite people. This is Priscilla Wells, and I'm Max. Miss Coffee. Wait, Max. And frankly, it's just as well we have Max's mighty time rewinding powers, given how we get caught in the beam of a flashlight every four seconds. I'm gonna cut you open, freak. Max. Oh, now everyone's got a flashlight, do they? Sure. I know you're dying for it. When I Stop! Oh, Max! Hey! What, were they on sale or something? The only thing that could make this more of an ordeal is if we had to collect a bunch of randomly scattered collectibles. Oh, snap. Oh, no. Bottles. This might be hell. It's fine, because in Max's subconscious nightmare landscape, the bottles symbolise guilt. The fragility of life. Recycling. Whatever reality I'm in feels like a bad dream. You said it, Max. I too have bad dreams about stealth sections. All right, look. I got you a copy of the initial report, and I can get you into the cabin, but you gotta make yourself real scarce after that. Anybody catches you, I don't know you. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is one of those games that says, play me any way you like, except this bit. This bit is stealth. The mission Elizabethan Rendezvous has you board a cargo ship looking for the ancient Ankaran sarcophagus, which is rumoured to contain an ancient vampire who can bring about the end of days. It is also an obligatory stealth section, which can be a bit of a problem if you put all of your character points into seduction, not sneakiness. Hey, you'd be amazed how many times you can romance yourself out of trouble. Baby. Not this time though. The ship, the Elizabeth Dane, is a maze of shipping containers crawling with police officers, and you've been charged by smug bossman Sebastian Lacroix not to be detected at all. And unlike the warehouse, you cannot wholesale slaughter a ship full of lawmen without consequences. Is this understood? I mean, police officers have guns, so not being detected was sort of the plan anyway. This is not quite what we had in mind when we became a cool, supernaturally powerful vampire, though dropping wrenches to distract beat cops so I can crouch walk past them. Who's there? Still, complete the mission without being spotted and LaCroix will give you this baller apartment in downtown Los Angeles. That place has got to be worth half a million dollars at least. Got any more awful stealth missions I can do for you? Lucas, come on Lucas, come and play. You can't spend your whole life just sitting in the corner. Lucas. When adding a stealth section to your non-stealth based game, the question you have to ask yourself is, do I want to develop a fully fledged stealth system that lets players recover their stealthy status if they get spotted? Or do I want something more like a sepia flashback sequence with an aggravating stealth section in which you fail the instant someone sees you? How about hide and seek? We could go play in Hangar 4. No way! You know we're not allowed to play in there! If you answered the second thing, you might be David Cage. In which case, hi David, thanks for watching. It's in cinematic stealth dabbling David Cage joint Fahrenheit, aka Indigo Prophecy, that you flash back to your old timey childhood memories on Washita military base, where you have to sneak into a hangar building to save your rubbish friends from being exploded. You're always off by yourself, you never talk to anyone, you never play with anyone. I'm starting to think maybe you're crazy. Despite being a tiny child no bigger than two thirds of an Ellen and patiently waiting for tediously slow truck patrols, you are easier to spot than a flamingo in a chicken coop. And when you do get seen, it's game over. Would you like to continue from your last save or snap your game disc in half? Don't move or I'll shoot. Really, hero, you're gonna shoot me, a tiny crouching child? The curious thing is in the beginning of the flashback you have a dramatic premonition of the future, warning of the stealth section yet to come and somehow you still manage to balls it up. Also wait a minute, was that a flash forward during a flashback? Like you were a child having a vision of the future while also an adult having a vision of the past. 
Who do you think you are? David Cage? Oh, right. You've got to stop messing with the timeline, David Cage. You're already starting to fade out of this photo I have of you for non-weird reasons. <laughs> Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a fantastic game full of some of the most beautiful and considered game design in ages, and I will eat several hats if it isn't top of most Game of the Year lists for 2017. That said, it also contains one of the worst missions I've played in years in the form of the Yiga Clan hideout, which is an essential, unskippable part of the Divine Beast Var Naboris questline. If you're unfamiliar with the Yiga Clan, they're a group of shape-shifting desert ninjas who spend most of their time pretending to be travellers, eating bananas, and annoying me. <laughs> The biggest annoyance of all, however, is their hideout, which is the very definition of an infuriating stealth section. This isn't really helped by the fact that there's not really a specific cover mechanic in Breath of the Wild, and trying to stick to a wall stealth style means a lot of the time you'll end up climbing it, which, I mean, if you're trying to make yourself more visible, then good job, nailed it. If you're spotted by one of the giant tank Yiga guys, he'll lock all the doors and whistle, calling in backup who will, with alarming efficiency, wreck your shit. That's when you discover that there's no checkpointing in the Yiga Clan hideout. That's okay, you think to yourself, I'll just save my game regularly as I go. For which, bless you, you sweet, naive child. Saving is disabled as well. Oh, but at least I've got Mifa's Grace and a ton of fairies to resurrect me when I- Nope, they're out too. It's like this mission was designed to win a bet on who could create the most annoying level possible in a video game. Which, oh, now I see, it's just another example of Breath of the Wild doing something brilliantly and being the best at it. It's just in this case, the thing is terrible stealth sections. I was worried there for a second. Use the snowstorm to mask your approach. Having second thoughts? Hardly. Just to prove that even games that are ostensibly all about stealth can get stealth wrong, Assassin's Creed 3. That is to say specifically any Assassin's Creed 3 mission that involves tailing and eavesdropping on a target, where you have to get close enough to hear whatever they're going on about, but not so close they get suspicious. This sweet spot between being too far away to be able to hear them and being so close that you're sitting in their lap is, wouldn't you know it, inside a stealth hedge. General Braddock refused the offer. There will be no truce. In the early mission, execution is everything. When you're still playing as Haytham, you have to spy on, oh, just two obscure soldiers by the names of John Fraser and George Washington. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe you've heard of one of them? I fear Braddock's bloodlust makes him careless. It puts them in a risk. Anyhow, George Washington and his less famous historical friend are having a natter while wandering through the base, and you, like a hero, have to hide in the bushes and listen. Woe betide you if they catch a glimpse of your handsome tricorn, though, or if you're out of eavesdropping range for a few seconds, because it's desynchronization city for you, my friend. Come on, Haytham, mate, get it together. How else are you going to find the important map in the command tent? I mean, apart from just searching the command tent. Huh. That map will surely be of use. Thought it best we stay silent on this mission. Hmm. Let's get going. All right, the Order 1886. I signed up to this order to be a Victorian steampunk James Bond. So tell me, what gives with this garden level, in which I'm less a suave man of mystery and gadgets, and more a man of getting instantly killed by patrolling guards? In this sudden death stealth section, our boy Grayson must fumble around in a dark garden, getting all sodden in the rain, looking for a spare key to let himself in. Which describes the end of my last Saturday night, incidentally. While I was crouch walking around the garden on Saturday evening, however, at least I could be sure that I would not meet any guards in bowler hat helmets who, if they saw me, would instantly gut shot me to death. Hey! This is sadly the situation for Grayson, who will find said guards on a hair trigger to ruin his crouch walk around the garden if they spot him or if he fails to do a stealth kill on them. Hey, you! Then, instead of getting a beautifully animated stealth execution, he receives a beautifully animated, if abrupt and humiliating, getting shot in the face. Hey, you. 
painful and embarrassing. Whose bright idea was this mission anyway? I'm blaming that Alistair. What's the incursion point? The gardens should provide us enough cover to move in unnoticed. Should they, Alistair? Should they? Hey, intruder! Those friends were some of the forced stealth sections that made us want to eat our own hands off in frustration and rage. Maybe you know some. I mean, I know there were a lot of them and we only included our personal unfavourites. So tell us all about them. And while you're doing that, or before you do that, or after you do that, why not also watch some other videos from outside Xbox up here or from outside Extra down here?